This is my 350 millimeter cubed Voron 2.4. It prints five times faster than my Prusa MK3S Plus, 16% bigger than my biggest 3D printer, has the best reliability of any printer I've ever seen, and took me over 200 hours of printing and 40 plus hours to assemble and build from scratch. And this is the story of how I built it and why you should build one too. In my previous video announcing the build, I talked about how Voron is not a company, but rather an open source design and community. That means that while some companies like LDO Motors, who generously sent me the entire kit for free, have cropped up producing complete kits, there are still a lot of decisions that you need to make along the way. I, for example, decided to build the largest recommended size that Voron supports at 350 by 350 by 350 because this printer will be replacing my CR10 V3. I also chose to go with my favorite colors and the colors of our logo, black and orange, for the entire build. And although LDO Motors was kind enough to send me that E3D Revo hot end that I've been eyeing for so long, I decided that I'll probably put that on another printer and instead decided to try out the Fetus Rapido hot end, which was generously sent to me by the folks at 3D Pros because I want to push the upper limits of speed on this printer. More on that later. Unfortunately, as you'll see later on in the video, I did not make all of the decisions that I would need to make up front, such as which extruder and tool head I was going to use, which inevitably meant that I'd need to reprint, disassemble, and reassemble various components numerous times. This meant that overall the build took a lot longer than the anticipated 40 hours, and I honestly stopped timing it after about 35 hours. But as you'll also see later on in the video, I didn't mind that one bit. I actually really enjoyed this build, as you'll soon see. With that said, one of the parts of the build that I didn't enjoy so much was actually printing the parts. I know, I know, 3D printing is the hobby itself that I enjoy, and in order to live up to the true RepRap ethos behind printers like the Voron, you really do need to print your own parts. And that's why I decided to do it from the get-go. And don't get me wrong, the Voron parts are perfectly designed for 3D printing, requiring no supports whatsoever and cleverly taking advantage of bridging capabilities in really unique ways. However, even with the handy dandy auto configurating spreadsheet that I found online, which lets you figure out which parts you need and which ones you've already printed, I still found this to be somewhat of an administrative hassle. For one, it can be pretty confusing and overwhelming to determine exactly which parts you need because the spreadsheet tool that I found hadn't been updated to have the adaptations that are unique to say the LDO kit, but also it doesn't take into consideration things that might be unique to your build, such as whether or not you'll be upgrading to the beta stealth murder design or the upgraded clicky detachable probe. Fortunately, I was lucky enough to be sponsored by Polymaker, so I had little to no issues printing the actual parts in Polymaker ASA, despite the fact that most ASA has typically been really hard for me to print due to bed adhesion issues in the past. My Prusa MK3S Plus managed to print the material with no problems in my custom-made enclosure, though I did have a few issues here and there with warping, and it's to be expected that you will have some print failures along the way. Ultimately though, once the kit arrived, I became a lot more rushed, especially because my wife and I were expecting another baby any day. And so I decided to speed things up by resorting to using hairspray on my build surface. And I even used brims on some prints with low surface area on the build plate. That reduced the number of parts that I would need to reprint due to quality or failures, but it's not an indictment of Polymaker's ASA in any way because it still did perform and adhere to the bed better than any other ASA I've ever used. And let me tell you, once I ran out of it, because I misprinted so many of the wrong parts along the way, I could really tell the difference on the remaining parts that I printed. I will say though that I didn't anticipate just how much of my time it was going to take to print the parts. Sure, they tell you that you're looking at about 180 hours of print time on a normal printer, but what I didn't factor in was just how much time I was going to spend sorting through the spreadsheets, 
figuring out which parts to print next, setting up my print bed, cleaning build plates, organizing the parts once they've been printed. In retrospect, if I were to do it all over again, I might just let go of the puritanical dedication to RepRap and just buy the printed parts from someone like 3D Pros Online, a company that carries everything from bits and bobs for Voron machines to printed parts kits, hot ends like the one that they sent me, and even fully assembled Vorons. You can check them out using the link in the description below for 10% off, and if you do, you'll actually be helping support the channel. Speaking of supporting the channel, I want to share a really exciting announcement from this video's sponsor, Voxel PLA. As you'll see later on in the video, one of the most important but also most challenging parts of this build was actually tweaking and configuring my Voron for peak performance at really high speeds. Now, fortunately for me, I didn't have to worry about whether or not my issues were caused by material quality or clogging because I just tested and configured my machine using Voxel PLA. Voxel PLA Pro was actually developed for internal use at Voxel's 150 plus machine print farm. So it's engineered for the utmost quality and reliability and tested for consistency and strength. It's guaranteed to be, as their tagline says, the most reliable filament on earth and yet despite all that, it sells for only $16.99 a kilo with free shipping on two kilos or more in the United States. Now I've been using Voxel extensively for any printer project that I need to just work without stringing, clogging, or under extrusion, especially on this high-speed Voron. Now I highly recommend you check out Voxel if you are looking for super reliable filament at a much lower price than those other brands out there. So visit the link in the description to pick some up yourself today. All right, back to the video. While the remaining parts were printing away, I decided to begin the mechanical assembly of the Voron, starting with the frame. Unboxing the LDO kit, I was sincerely blown away by the quality and the attention to detail. Every single nut, bolt, and screw was labeled in a neat little baggie with plenty of extras and then packed away in a separate box for each part of the build. And when I say every, I mean everything, except for Loctite, bearing grease, and carbon pellets, because those three things cannot be shipped internationally. Anytime I scratched my head and wondered if they would include something or if they'd forgotten or left it out, I soon figured out that no, they had included it and also spares of it. This includes all the tools you might need from high quality Allen keys and drill bits to heat set tools and sandpaper, all the parts that you need for the more popular upgrades like the clicky magnetic probe, upgraded LEDs for the tool head and enclosure, everything needed for the stealth burner upgrade, and much, much more. Overall, this build was incredibly enjoyable thanks to the LDO kit. It was so enjoyable that I often just decided to shut off the camera and enjoy the process. Seriously, I've had massages that I enjoyed less than building this 3D printer. Whereas in the beginning, I thought that it might be a struggle, I soon discovered what I think is one of the major selling points of the Voron and something I didn't understand when I embarked on this project. Sure, you can buy an out of the box printer that prints just as fast or even faster and maybe even for less money, but that's not the point. Building a Voron is about having a no compromises, ultra high performance printer that you can modify, upgrade and repair. Yes, but it's also about the process. As I was working through the build, my father, an electrical engineer by training, actually came into town for the birth of his second grandson that I mentioned before. And he said something to me like, I'm sure the next generation will be much easier to assemble. And in that moment, I came up with what I think is actually a perfect metaphor for the Voron versus other printers on the market today. Sure, you can buy a Ferrari or a Lamborghini and get insane performance out of the box. But this isn't that. This is a custom built homemade hot rod or kit car tuned and tweaked to the owner's own preferences with his own technology and own desires. Sure, with some work, it can and will beat out the Ferrari or the Lamborghini, but that's not the point. The point is the experience of building it yourself and the pride of using it, knowing that you literally assembled every single nut, bolt, screw, and belt. It's about the experience and what an experience it was. As I went through the build, I could feel my skills and my understanding of 3D printing and engineering as a whole improving throughout the project. And to be honest, 
I was no slouch before. Was it hard? No, I honestly can't say that it was. And honestly, that's largely because the instructions were so good. They made assembling IKEA furniture look like a final exam at MIT. I mean, each step was clearly illustrated and explained down to the exact screw to use, and even in many cases, the possible issues that you might have at that step and how to resolve those issues if you have them. I can honestly say that everything was clearly laid out in the manual, telling me exactly what I needed to do and when, until it wasn't. Because you see, as I mentioned before, every Voron build is different. And in my build, I decided to do things a certain way with certain parts and certain upgrades and certain configurations. So while the main Voron 2.4 PDF guide was 300 plus pages of clear cut step-by-step -step instructions telling me exactly what I needed to do, it was only part of the story. Oh, you're going to print your own parts for the LDO kit? There is a separate guide for that. And you wanted to add the upgrade stealth burner tool head too? That's definitely gonna be a separate guide. Fetus Rapido hot end? You're gonna need two supplemental guides to get that right. Clicky probe, <laughs> that's gonna be another guide. <laughs> And this one is nowhere near as thorough or as clear as the other. Oh, and wait, did you say LDO kit? That's gonna be a separate guide for wiring. Plus a few mini guides along the way with unique aspects of that wiring. Plus a supplemental guide to tell you what parts of the original guide are not relevant to this guide. Plus a... You get the idea. All this is well and good. I mean, I'm glad that there are guides for each one of these steps and configurations, and yeah, Figuring out is definitely part of the pride of building your own custom hot rod. But unfortunately, there's not very much guidance as to when you need to switch from one guide to the next, or if, for that matter, you need to switch at all. In fact, I didn't even realize that some of these guides, like the super helpful addendum and errata page on LDO's website, actually existed until I'd already followed the wrong guide for that area. Now, I'm not sure what the solution here is, to be honest. Perhaps Voron's team could simply add in notes on the main guide, like a choose your own adventure book, such as if you're going to use the stealth burner instead, switch to that guide now and proceed directly to page XX once completed. Or perhaps someone out there can upgrade the main guide to be LDO and stealth burner specific. Though in the interim, I would recommend that you first decide what upgrades you're going to do so that you don't print needless parts like I did. Then I suggest reading through all of those guides and making notes for yourself right on there to indicate to yourself when you need to switch over to another supplemental guide. Look, I know you're not actually gonna do any of this because I didn't do it either despite many people recommending it, but hey, you can lead a horse to water, right? All in all, I really enjoyed this build nonetheless, and I just wish that the entire build process had been as smooth, clear, and confusion-free as the main guide itself. So Voron team, LDO team, if you're watching this, those would be my recommendations. All right, gang, I know that in the past, you've all told me that you prefer that I split up these longer videos, so I want to respect that and respect your time. So with that, I'll be back next week with the remainder of the build, including wiring, electronics, software, tuning, and of course, how to avoid some of those big mistakes that I made that cost me time, attention, and filament. Plus, we'll actually fire this thing up and see how it runs. Please make sure that you are not only subscribed, but that you also hit the bell icon so that you're notified when next week's video comes out. And let me know in the comments if there are any questions that you'd like me to answer so I can cover those in some future videos as well. Until next week, thanks for watching and happy 3D printing.